Hey guys, what's up? Today we had the final announcements for the Wild Nerve Reverts. Over the past few days, Alec Dawson on Twitter has just been just giving us a little, a little sprinkle of a, a couple classes here and there. And finally, all 30, um, I think it's 30, <laughs> Wild Reverts have been announced. Now, these reverts are going to go live with patch 20.0. Um, so very, very soon in a couple of weeks. Um, so really looking forward to that. There will be a time period where these nerfs go live before the expansion. The expansion will be out on the 30th. Um, and so there'll be kind of a week, uh, layover there, which should be very, very fun. Now, other things that are going to be happening when the, uh, when this patch happens, when all the reverts happen is that Nitro Bruce is getting nerfed. Um, this hasn't been officially confirmed yet, but there was a leak of sorts where they updated the the um the pre-made decks that people have and there was a two mana nitro boost there in addition to that alec has previously said on twitter that there was going to be a patch um last week but it just got pushed back because things kind of uh got out of control um and so that is also strongly hinted at as being nitro boost just in what he was saying about rogues burst and then he also liked uh this tweet from zacko so nitro boost basically confirmed and that's an important thing to keep in mind as we evaluate these cards so Let's get into it. Let's talk about the cards. Now, if we spend about 20 seconds on each card, this should take no longer than, you know, about 10 minutes. So let's try and aim for that. Um, I haven't done a ton of theory crafting yet, so my opinion might change on certain things once I get a, a really good look at it. And, you know, speaking of theory crafting, we should have a video out with lots and lots of decks with the these reverted cards. Um, lots of theory crafts coming out very, very soon on this channel. So, you know, keep an eye out for that. But without further ado, let's dig into it. So Keep of the Grove um, doesn't really fit into any current Druid decks because, you know, it doesn't interact with the Oaken. As soon as it's unplayable, um, moving on. Ancient of Law, similar thing. Way too high cost at 7 mana to be too useful. If you want to play these cards, go enjoy Classic Mode. Um, I'm sure that'd be great there. So Druid didn't really get anything. Next up, let's talk about Hunter. Now, Hunter did get some very cool stuff. I mean, just look at my beautiful background. Let's start there. Starving Buzzard. Uh, this is definitely the nerf that people were probably clamoring the most for. I mean, I, I certainly was. I was really happy uh, to see this one reverted. Now, is this going to be able to, like, really, really push Hunter? Eh. <laughs> I have some serious doubts. Um, that said, I'm very excited about Buzzard. It's the type of card that I really like. I'm looking forward to toying around with it. Um... And goddamn, Hunter needed this, so looking forward to it. Uh, Flare, one mana. This card is probably a lot less useful than people might think in just random Hunter decks. Um, I think the idea of like, oh, it's a one mana like cycle, it's insane. Like, no, a <laughs> one mana cycle that doesn't really do that much isn't very good. That's it. It is like a uniquely powerful effect against Secret Mage. Um, on the other hand, it also buffs Zeph. So that's just like another thing to keep in mind. But yeah, Flare, happy to see this one. Dynatamer Bran, very excited, very exciting to see Dynatamer Bran, um, it needed it, you know, we knew this one was happening for a while, uh, the power level, we know it's not insanely high in wild, um, but it's a very powerful card, like, it's a, it's a very powerful card, we know how Reno Hunter goes, so Reno Hunter definitely deserved it and, you know, needed it. Next up, we have Hunter's Mark, so Hunter's Mark goes to one, not zero, uh, zero would have been really important, I think for, you know, the class. Um, it would have been a super clean answer to things like, oh, I don't know, a turn three flesh giant, um, <laughs> potentially. But, you know, without the without the zero costing, I don't think the one cost Hunter's Mark really gets there in any Hunter deck in Wild. Um, I think that not fully reverting it might be a nod to the fact that they might put this back in standard at some point. So yeah, Hunter's Mark, not too much of a big deal. All right, now next up we have Mage. Now, Mage could have been super scary. Um, mana Worm is now a 1 mana 1-2, one, not a 1 mana 1-3. One, 1-3 three. Uh, one, three Worm, I think would have been really busted. Secret Mage's number one weakness probably right now is the lack of 1-drop. Um, it's like the one thing that it has kind of going against it and stops it from being even better. And so I think Worm would have been a fantastic card in Secret Mage. Very happy that we're not going to have to deal with that. So uh, I'm happy with this decision. Uh, Conjure was calling. I don't really see a home for it. Um, when it was previously a three mana, the best use you could get out of it was randomly generating it off uh, in a quest mage game. Um, other than that, it, it doesn't seem particularly, you know, effective. I mean, I'm sure we'll toy around with it and things like odd mage with corridor creeper, things like that. Um, but overall, not really much of a big deal. Uh, Dragon caster though. 
Dragoncast are very happy to see this one. LPG Mage, one of my favorite uh, decks that I haven't really played. Um, especially about the Reno decks. Uh, Galaxy Mage is... Galaxy Mage is probably my top 20. I, I really enjoyed Galaxy Mage. Um, and so, yeah, I really like the Dragon version as well. Okay, next up we have Paladin. Uh, we already saw a couple Paladin potential reverts where a quality that's, that's getting changed in the core set. And so Paladin just had the one. Call to Arms. Um, this is one of the most important uh, <laughs> reverts that we got. So Call to Arms. Um, it's very busted. I think people forget just how good it is. That said, Paladin right now... Um, it's tough to envision, right? Because like Paladin is so much around Odd Pally right now. That's like the only archetype that people are really using. Um, apart from this very fringe play for things like hand buff, which, you know, also isn't interested in Call to Arms. And so, you know, we're going to be pushing archetypes that people haven't seen in a long time. That said, I think Call to Arms is actually good enough where it can push those archetypes. Next up, we have Priest. Um, Extra Arms does not get the rebirth that we all desperately wanted. Um, understandable, though. You know, they didn't they didn't buff uh, Galaxy as well. So, I get it. I get it. Um, that said, we did get Shield back. Powered Shield. So, Powered Shield um, pretty much goes in, like, every Priest deck <laughs> is the thing. So, it, it goes in Raider Priest. Uh, I mean, I guess it doesn't go in big. But it goes in Raider Priest. Uh, we get to maybe try Inner Fire again. And try Inner Fire kind of just completely died with the uh, shield nerf. Now, I don't think Inner Fire is back at all. I really don't. I think that um, Inner Fire was kind of already lagging well behind uh, before the Power Shield reboot happened. In Wild, it kind of just died a little bit when the uh, extra, arms, uh, extra Arms nerf happened. And so I don't think there's been enough ground made up, enough building blocks, enough like extra buffs since then that makes me think that, you know, Inner Fire Priest is gonna be a strong deck. Um, but yeah, Power Shield busted. Congrats to Reno Priest, of course. Um, now we have like the big class that kind of got the biggest uh, shake up. Rogue. So with the two mana Blade Flurry, I already wasn't expecting that this would see play um, before I kind of caught up on the Nitro uh, boost news. And my, my main thinking of that is that I, I think like giving up the damage is sort of just not worth it <laughs> in a lot of situations. And they're also not a ton of like super wider board heavy board centric decks. Um, I've heard people mention that Dark Lair, like this would be a great card for the Dark Lair matchup and I just don't really see it. Um, like a lot of the time by the time Dark Lair pops off, your Kingsbane is probably at like five attack kind of thing. And so I think a more winning line in a lot of those situations is sort of just going face with your five attack weapon. And it's a lot less about trying to like clear the board and giving up that um, attack damage. And, you know, and again, there's a lot of like, uh, a lot of like matchups where it's very, very bad. Um, and so to me, it always just seemed like a, a far too clunky card. That said, we don't have to worry about it too much now because Nitro Boost <laughs> um, has been nerfed. So moving on, we have Caverns Below Quest Rogue. Now we thought that this wasn't gonna happen. Um, there was a tweet going around that uh, Ixar, I think had said at one point blatantly, like, no, we are not reverting Quest Rogue. Turns out that tweet was from a year ago. <laughs> um, so, you know, with the board change, Bluegill change, and their general, you know, changing philosophy on reverts in wild, um, they obviously changed their decision, which I think I'm happy about. Now, I've seen a lot of worrying about Quest Rogue, and it's a very weird uh, deck to evaluate. The effect is just weird. It, it just does things that other decks and cards just don't do. So it's sort of very outside the box. Um, and two, it's just been a really long time, right? Um, it's been a really long time since we saw the full powered version. And so Quest Rogue has got a whole bunch of like really good new stuff. If I had to guess right now, I would hedge towards the side that Quest Rogue is probably gonna be quite bad. It's very tough for the deck to break even, right? Because if you're like the basic math of it, is that if it is losing like 85-15 against something like Secret Mage, which is what used to happen when the deck was in standard, um, or even like 80-20, it means that the deck has to be like Dark Lair levels of broken into the rest of the field to break even. Like you can't just have 80-20 matchups and be like really, really strong. <laughs> it just doesn't work like that. The math just doesn't work out, especially in Wild where things like Secret Mage and Odd Rogue and whatever um, can make like up a pretty decent chunk of the meta. Either way, I think I'm very happy to see this change. Um, as long as the deck's not too strong and too popular, 
like if they're willing to step in if it does become a problem again, then great. Um, but I always like the idea of Quest Rogue. It's the type of deck that I enjoy. You know, it's interesting, it's weird, high skill cap, all that kind of good stuff. Um, so I'm happy for a uh, for more Quest Rogue gameplay. All right, next up, Nethgrim Apothecary. Uh, going from five to four, I really hated seeing this one. Um, this is probably the nerf that sort of annoyed me the most, or the, the revert that annoyed me the most. I don't really like there being more explicit one card mana cheating in the format. Um, I don't really think the format benefits from like insane early game power spikes like that. But whatever, here we go. There are really two ways that you can build around Apothecary. Um, aggro and basically play it as a, a small package that it just aims to cheat out something like a, a, a Cursed or a Mech Whelp, um, something like that. And the other way is the meme way where you just play Deathwing <laughs> as your only Death Rattle. Um, the meme version's bad and the aggro deck was good previously. That said, the aggro deck's very hard to build around. Um, we'll see where it lands, but yeah, it's not really happy about this change. It'll be interesting to deck build, but not great to play. Um, Oh, and I guess the third way is uh, just Big Rogue. Forgot about that being a deck. Um, but yeah, Big Rogue, tough to see as well in the, the current climate. And next up, we have Galakrond. Uh, no longer putting minions to one, putting them to zero. Good change. We like Galakrond cards in Wild, I think. Anything that really promotes a more mid-range strategy is probably good for the format, which is kind of why I like the Galakrons in Wild specifically. And lastly, Edwin to three. Um, I mean, we knew about this. Good. All right, moving on into Shaman. Uh, we have Spirit Claws. Spirit Claws will be fun to play for a week. And then once they nerf the Spell Power Totem, we can never play Odd Shaman again. So, you know, that's, that's a bit of a sad one. But yeah, Spirit Claws will be good for a week. I'm looking forward to giving Odd Shaman a send off and then it will become irrelevant. And then we have the three Galakron cards, the Elementalist, uh, Invocation of Frost and Dragon's Pack. Um, it's tough to see Galakron Shaman really being that good without the Mogu. Like they, they didn't revert Mogu, which I think is probably what the deck would need. You need to have that Desert Hair Mogu evolve package in the early game. Um, that said, I am looking forward to playing some Galakron Shaman, uh, even if it won't be the strongest deck probably. I, I am very excited to play Zentimo. <laughs> Zentimo was something that was used when the deck was at its peak at standard, where uh, you used to play like things like Mutate and Invocation of Frost, and now we have Torrent. Uh, Torrent is very exciting, so I'm looking forward to jamming some Galakron Shaman. And the other Shaman card that was reverted was Flame Tongue. Uh, pretty big deal. Partial revert, going to a 0-2 rather than a 0-3. I mean, it's good. <laughs> it's not what it was. Uh, where it, previously, it was probably the best card in Eva Shaman, arguably. I mean, it was right up there with something like Eel in the previous iteration of the deck. But now we play like Totemic Surge and Totemic Might and Splitting Axe. And so I think like Flame Tongue at 0 3 would have been absolutely the best card in Even Shaman. Um, at 0 2, I mean, it's good, but like it's better than Evil Totem. Um, will it make Even Shaman a real deck again? Eh, maybe. <laughs> maybe. It'll be strong. Uh, and I'm looking forward to some recovery from Even Shaman, which has gone away completely. Uh, Warlock, Warlock only got to one revert. Um, Fiendish Rides, sure, we can play some Galakron Zoo again, um, sounds good. Next up, Warrior, Warrior got three, um, Sign of Ruin, which I didn't want to see, but I'm not too mad about it, I mean, this is probably the one Galakron card that I, I dislike the most, just because at four mana it was already very, very strong, at three mana it's sort of a bit obnoxious <laughs> in how good it is into, uh, aggro, but... You know, it is what it is. They're pushing Galakron Warrior again. I mean, sure, it's not the end of the world. Um, Mercenary, Mercenary, I don't think it really makes that much of a difference if it's a 3-3 three, three or a 2-2. Two, two. Uh, charge. They brought back Charge. They brought back Worgen Warrior, or I guess like maybe Crab Rider Warrior. Hmm. We'll have to see on that. But yes, Crab Rider Warrior uh, centered around Charge. Very happy and expected um, that they brought back Charge. The card made no sense giving um, Rush. Being called Charge, mm, seemed kind of weird. But yeah, Worgen Warrior is one of my favorite decks to play uh, previously when I was kind of first getting into the game. It's basically going to fit into that same shell that we've all been looking to try and fit a good win condition in, whether it's Dead Man's Hand, ETC, now we have Charge Warrior. Is this going to be the answer? Eh, I doubt it. <laughs> I mean, it still loses the Taunt and things like that, an Ice Block, which makes it an issue. But, you know, it's a cool deck. 
I like combo decks coming to the format. I like it. Interesting stuff. Um, so yeah, happy to see that one. And then finally, we have the neutrals, dude. Oh, the neutrals. We're going to try and uh, try and rip through this one. Ten neutrals were reverted. Undertaker, now gets plus one, plus one. I think it's still bad. I think Undertaker's bad. Um, I, I could be wrong, but I think this is not going to do anything. And so it's be purely for nostalgia, which, you know, isn't the worst thing. Um, Arcane Golem. I was very nervous about Arcane Golem. Um, because Odd Rogue. Uh, I thought this card was going to be really, really, really good in Odd Rogue. Uh, spoiler, Nitro is nerfed. So it's no longer a thing in Odd Rogue. So where do we play Arcane Golem? Dark Lair. <laughs> I mean, we played in Dark Lair, I think. Uh, and that's kind of it. You can you can use those POs. You can make up the damage a lot of time. Just like the, the you would have missed out on the like the two mana for the extra two damage with Leroy. You can make that up with Penflinger. And so you don't really miss out on anything. It's the cheaper card and it's really, really good in the mirror, right? Your opponent pops up on Dark Lair and then with five mana, you could just go Arcane Golem PO PO uh, for 12. So that's kind of disgusting, um, <laughs> which is actually very funny because the type of card that you might think actually pushes back Dark Lair, um, but I don't really think it's going to see play in any competitive decks for the most part, apart from Dark Lair, which is uh, funny. Um, next up, Lepinome. Yeah, Lepinome I'm really not sure about. Um, there are a few strategies that get opened up by Lepinome, so I'm very happy that we got it. Um, among the more like OP decks right now, the, the stronger decks, does Lepinome fit into them? I'm not sure into like Odd Rogue, maybe. Um, especially with the Nitro Revert, like a couple of slots might open up. And so potentially, it's not like a super strong card, but it, it's fine. Death Rattle, Priest things. Uh, ultimately, I'm very happy with this card being reverted. Knife Juggler is most relevant is because of Cold Arms. Um, as, the, as a card itself, I don't think it sees any plays. So this is basically a Pally card as far as I can tell. Um, and a Cold Arms card at that. And, you know, in that deck, it's fine. I don't love that we got Juggler back because, you know, Juggler pings a pretty horrific RNG. I, I think it's a shitty experience to have like ra random Juggle pings deciding games, but... It is what it is. Um, it shouldn't be too popular, so sure. Uh, Bone Meta 7. I don't think it sees any play. It's it's a long overdue revert. They probably could have done this last year and it would have made a bigger impact potentially. RIP the Bone Mare a little too late. Um, Saronite Chain Gang though, actually pretty interesting where Saronite goes into things like Shutterwalk, goes into things like Hand Buff Pally. But <laughs> yeah, there are a whole bunch of like weird things that just kind of open up with the Saronite revert which I'm very happy about. So this is another one that was a bit long overdue. It's nice to give something like that support rather than the tier one deck. So I'm happy about this one. Alisiana going to eight. Um, some people are a bit mad about this one because they can't play it in Odd Warrior. I'm fine with it though, the more I thought about it. It was never good in Odd Warrior. And so sure, like it's not like it's taking anything away from the competitive scene at all. And I'm sure that there are a lot of more like lower ranked players who just want to jam Alisiana in their super sick fatigue control mage, um, <laughs> their awesome control uh, fatigue paladin. And so for those kind of players who are a bit more casual and want to play this sort of ultra greed lord style of decks, I think it's fine to give them this. Like this is a good buff for that. Um, and again, the fact that it was not even good in Old Warrior, just outright pretty terrible. Um, makes me just fine with this change, I think. Uh, DQA going to zero mana dragons. Uh, happy about this because it helps the Reno Priest. Sorry. <laughs> it helps the Reno decks that um, kind of have been pushed out a little bit. So Galaxy Mage, for example. We get to play Dragon Galaxy Mage, maybe, which is cool. We can play maybe Dragon Reno Priest, which is a, a different take, which would be fine. I don't know, Dragon support in general, I, I think it's kind of cool for the format. So I don't really love Highlander decks in general. That's sort of not my thing. But the Dragon stuff in those Highlander decks has always been some of my preferred versions of those decks. And so I'm happy to see this one, I suppose. Um, and speaking of Highlander decks, we have Albatross going to three. Not great for the format, but, you know, like when, when tech cards are sort of dominating the format, that doesn't feel amazing. Um, at the same time, you know, a, a check against Highlander isn't the worst thing. So I don't know. I kind of have a bit of a mixed feelings on this one. Um, that's an Albatross probably shouldn't see too much play overall. It's 
probably just too slow outright for things like Odd Rogue, things like Odd DH, um, things like Odd Paladin. It, it was never like a great performer in those decks and the format's only gotten faster uh, since then. I think the more likely home for it is probably just something like Q-Block. You know, we can play Albatross Q-Block again. Um, that can maybe make a return. And so I think I'm fine with Albatross uh, coming back. Um, and I guess people will play it regardless of if it's good or not, because people hate getting Renoed on six, which is a sentiment I, you know, understand quite well. And the last one, Frenzied Felwing going to a 3-3. Doesn't really do anything. You know, it's a very minor buff. We can play it in Even Hunter again. I suppose it's a bit more acceptable there. But overall, that's kind of it. So the the big ones that we sort of missed out on um, that didn't get, end up getting reverted were things like Giggling Inventor, uh, Faceless Corruptor um, was another one. But yeah, apart from that, it was all pretty uh, pretty predictable. I guess Mogu uh, among the class cards. Mogu's one that we maybe thought was happening that didn't end up happening, um, which I'm happy about. But overall, it was pretty on point with some of the guesses that we made. The reverts, I think, are... Uh, you know, what we wanted or what I wanted, what a lot of people in my community wanted, um, which is nice. I think it should be a healthy shakeup. Funnily, I think the Nitro nerf probably does just as much <laughs> as like maybe 10 of these reverts, which is quite funny, but we'll have to see how it goes. As I said, there will be a theory crafting video. Uh, maybe my thoughts will change once I kind of dig into things a little bit more um, and take a proper look in the, uh, in the coming days leading up to the patch. But looking forward to that, looking forward to playing this weird version of Wild where we get all the reverts uh, before the expansion goes live. Guys, as always though, if you want to catch that kind of content, you can come do so at Corbett Games on Twitter and Twitch. Um, so, you know, come hang out, come look at what I've got and it'll be a good time. Otherwise, have a good one. Hope, to, hope you enjoy all the, you know, buffs that are about to be announced and, you know, see you next time. Peace out, guys. Bye.